Hey everybody and welcome to episode 327 of Unboxing Wednesdays for comics arriving in stores on Wednesday, February 1st, 2017. <laughs> You say February or February? February. February? No, I don't. I, Feb, February? So I guess February. February. That's how I say it. <laughs> That's a terrible way of saying it. Yeah, it's just, it's my way. Ricky, did you watch um, the new Riverdale show? I did not. You gotta check out Riverdale. Is it good? Oh, there it's. Is they're doing simultaneous CW and, and Netflix, Netflix, right? Netflix cool, which yeah. is cool because I don't think we do we, we do we get the CW here in Canada? Uh, Not anymore, I don't um, think. Anyway, yeah, I watched it on Netflix. It is uh, uh, some crazy stuff. Is it like dark and gritty? Yeah, well, it's mm. like I, I don't know, gritty is the word, but like dark and angsty, you know, like like any good CW like Dawson's Creek high school drama would be. No, Dawson's Creek was not dark mm. and no. All right, fine. <laughs> they had that nice song at the beginning about not wanting to wait. I don't want to wait. Yeah. Uh -huh. They don't have that in Riverdale. Uh, so yeah, yeah, check out Riverdale. It's pretty cool. I always love it when you take beloved characters that have been squeaky clean like their whole uh, existence and then just totally throw that out the window and... <sighs> Work for yeah. Batman. What about you, man? What have you, what have you been up to? Chilling, man. I heard uh, Ben Affleck left as director of Batman. Left as director, oh, but man. still producing. I heard and there's rumors he might starring. not be starring. No, that That's, can't. That I heard. Can't be. That's what I heard, man. Ben is like the perfect <laughs> Batman. I don't know. Uh, Let's see, man. All right. Well, could you imagine if he also didn't do Batman? Like that'd be crazy. I just shut down the DC universe. They, they would have to. They would <laughs> like, have to just end it. We tried, we failed. They would have to just end it and then uh, take the concept for Riverdale and put it on the big screen. Yeah. Uh, all right, Ricky, let's get to this week's new releases. Uh, some awesome stuff to get to. Go ahead and open some boxes. All right, first up today, we've got issue 50 of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, a landmark issue for this title. Uh, and here is the variant cover, which is uh, like the uh, artist editions that IDW puts out that are uh, so awesome. So there you go. It's a new one from Image. It's called Extremity. This is issue one. It is uh, in... An ash can type format. Very cool. Gem and the Misfits issue number two. Josie and the Pussycats issue number four. Ghostbusters annual. This tells the origin story of Slimer. Here's Deadly Class issue number 26. Image is celebrating 25 years of awesome comics uh, starting this month and uh, they've got a lot of really cool inexpensive stuff for all you comic fans out there. First up is this. This is Image Classics 25 must-have series that uh, define the creator-owned revolution. This is a free pickup at most of your local comic shops tomorrow, so check that out. Then we've got Vampirella issue number zero. This is uh, not an Image book, but uh, by Dynamite we have uh, Vampirella issue number zero, which is a 25 cent book. Here is the variant cover for that book. And then to celebrate 25 years of Image Comics, we have The Walking Dead, issue 163, only 25 cents. It's a full issue. Um, and uh, how cool is that? Image is going to be doing stuff like this all month, so uh, make sure you don't miss out on those 25 cent books. We also have this 1 in 200 variant for Walking Dead 163, and a 1 in 500 variant. And yes, that is Rick holding Lucille. And then finally today for the uh, non-Marvel DC books, we have Paper Girls issue number 11. Moving on to DC, we've got Captain Atom number two, Aquaman number 16, Cyborg number nine, Green Lanterns number 16, Green Arrow number 16, Superman number 16, and the variant cover by Tony Daniel. Harley Quinn, number 13. And here's the variant by Frank Cho. Nightwing, issue number 14. Beautiful Marcus Toe cover art. Here's Justice League number 14, and the variant by Yannick Paquette. Batman number 16, and the Batman 16 variant by Tim Sale. All right, this book is gonna be awesome. I've declared it right here. Uh, needs no reasoning other than reading out the title. It's Planet of the Apes, Green Lantern, issue number one of six. This is a co-production between DC Comics and Boom Studios. And uh, yeah, uh, I just want to say that inside, as you can see by the cover here, an ape gets a lantern ring. Sign me up. I want to see what happens with that. Uh, this is the first issue. This is the regular cover. Here is the variant cover. Uh, 
the action figure cover showing Cornelius as a Mego style um, Green Lantern figure. Uh, there's Dr. Zaius there, he's a Yellow Lantern. Um, very cool. <laughs> Here's one of the variants uh, titled Ape on the Planet of the Lanterns. And this final variant uh, pays tribute to the uh, original appearance of Hal Jordan uh, in Silver Age books. Very cool cover swipe there indeed. Moving on to Marvel, we've got Karnak issue number 6, Deadpool number 26. It's got a Valentine's Day theme. This is the first of the Joe Jusco variants that we'll be seeing this month. Uh, so this is the uh, Joe Jusco variant for Deadpool number 26. Champions issue number 5, co-starring Gwenpool. Here's the Joe Jusco variant for that book. Mark Wade and Mike Del Mundo's Avengers issue number 4. Here is the Joe Jusco variant. Here's Moon Knight number 11, and all new X-Men number 1.mu, so this ties into the Monsters Unleashed story. Old Man Logan number 17, here's Nova issue number 3, Bullseye issue number 1, Spider-Man 2099 number 20, here is Gwenpool number 11. Monsters Unleashed number 2, this is the Greg Lang cover and the Francesco Francavia cover. Not to be outdone by Image and Dynamite Marvel also has a low cost option for you this week. My you they are reprints uh, but they might be reprints you're interested in this is true believers Wolverine issue number one uh, this uh, reprints issue number one of Chris Claremont and Frank Miller's uh, Wolverine story uh, $1 US for this book and this one's really cool uh, it's Wolverine versus Hulk number one which of course reprints Hulk number 181 uh, first appearance of Wolverine uh, and it's something that we uh, it's a cover that we enjoyed so much that we actually uh, did a cover swipe of it for our Betty and Veronica number one cover uh, a few months back and that, that's been doing extremely well online in the aftermarket. Um, so yeah, pick up these two cool one dollar books at your shop today. Here's Star Wars issue 28. Here's the Star Wars 28 variant and the action figure variant which is C-3PO with removable limbs. This is the Empire Strikes Back version of C-3PO. Alright Star Wars fans are getting really excited about this one. It is Darth Maul issue number one. This is going to be written by Cullen Bunn uh, and there's also a backup story in it by Chris Iliopoulos. Uh, which is really cool as well. Here's one of the Darth Maul variants. Action figure variant. Here is another one of the variants and the Mark Brooks variant. And lastly before we get to the prizes I just want to remind everybody that Previews Magazine is available at your local shop today. This gives you a sneak peek at everything coming in in April 2017 to shops including the Batman Flash Watchmen crossover known as The Button. Um, you'll definitely want to check out StadiumComics.com for more information on this title. Uh, we are selling pre-order packs right now which include the lenticular covers that will be released for it. So uh, previews and also StadiumComics.com for your pre-order packs uh, for The Button and also our Venomized variants are selling really well in there right now. So check that out. All right guys, prize time. So last week I asked you what band you want to see have its own comic. Got some pretty amazing answers. Uh, comic Guys Rule says a great comic would be about Twisted Sister traveling around Europe in a van solving mysteries while playing venues to try and pay for food, gas, and hair products on their epic adventures. I think that'd be hilarious, especially uh, how animated and crazy Twisted Sister was. I think that'd be hilarious, especially if the dad from the We're Not Gonna Take It music video is like a reoccurring villain. That'd be hilarious. He's always like falling down or something or some tragic happens to him. Hilarious. Jason Todd said, I'd like to see Slipknot comic and all nine members dressed as Power Rangers fighting crime. Arctic monkeys in a comic would fight crime in Canada with mini intelligent monkeys and have white outfits to blend into the snow like Moon Knight. So would it be like two comics in one? Or are we talking like separate comics? Because the Slipknot Power Rangers comic, I'm all about. You got the guy with the nose. He's like jacking off his nose. I'm really into Slipknot, or at least I was when I was in high school. Not so much anymore, but I still listen to their first album here or there. It's good stuff. I would read that though. The Slipknot comic, all about that. Funk Off, he, the winner from last week, he said, uh, what, this is awesome, thank you so much. I think I'm in shock, I never win anything, thanks a million. No, no, thank Buns, because he pulled your name. 
Black Sabbath is a comic, OMG, that'd be a tripped out comic with wizards, children of the grave, dragons, religion. Man, that'd be an awesome comic. Thanks, Ian Stadium. I would read the crap out of a Black Sabbath comic. There's so much cool stuff behind that. Oh man. Let's make that happen. Mike Irish said the Ramones should have a comic and it would be about them beating the crap out of bands like Good Charlotte and Newfound Glory. And when those bands would regain consciousness, they would find themselves in a classroom chained up to the desk and the Ramones would teach them what punk really is. I don't know if the classroom is the best way to learn about what punk is, but you know what? I stand by the sentiment. Let's get it going. Frank Iaspari said the Beatles, the comic would be a what if. Lennon still meets Yoko, but when he brings her, she dies. So now the Beatles have to hide the body and play it off like it never happened. And they go on making music to this day, something similar to how to get away with a murder TV show. Um, or I was thinking kind of like a weekend at Bernie's where they have to take Yoko Ono's dead body and like bring her around. She's like, hey guys, what's up? So they need to reboot that weekend at Bernie's. Is Get that going. Uh, Havoc Jinx says the group I think should have a comic is Outcast. There'd be nothing better than a gangster pimp alien comic series that incorporated tones of the U.S. political divide from the perspective of a kid growing up in the South. Think Strange Fruit meets Luke Cage meets Justice League versus Suicide Squad meets Black Panther. They could add guest appearances by Childish Gambino, Run the Jewels, Eminem, Jay Z, Scarface, and How Could You Not Have Drake? This would be epic. Make it happen, Reggie. I, I will try my best. I can't make any promises, but I'll try. Um, Outcast, I think, would be a fantastic band to have a comic. I mean, Andre 3000 had that kid show for a while where he was like a music teacher or something. So anything's possible, really. But the winner, and I'm a little bit biased because this is my favorite band, goes to Danny Gates, who said, I'd like to see System of a Down comic where Serge Tankian is running for president. Could you imagine how awesome that'd be? His cabinet would be the mushroom people from the first album, and he would just, he'd probably make a better president than uh, a lot of these other presidents we got. So I would read the hell out of that comic, especially if it's like funny. It's gotta be funny. So congratulations, Danny Gantz. You will be entered into the draw at the end of the month. All right, so for this week's question, I'm gonna ask you about uh, this Planet of the Apes Green Lantern. If you had a Green Lantern ring, what, was the, what would be the first thing you create and that green energy. I think for me, it'd be some type of airplane. And I'd just fly wherever I wanted because airplanes are sweet. So let us know uh, the first thing you'd create with a Green Lantern ring and the winner will be entered into the draw at the end of the month. All right, everybody, that is it for this week. Thank you once again for watching. Please connect with us on any of the social media sites listed here on your screen. Take care and enjoy your comics this week.